Hi everybody, it's Laura from Sew Us Abroad and today we are on day number three of our Rainbow Hexie Quilt Along. So today what we are going to be doing is assembling our quilt sandwich and then we are going to talk about machine quilting hand quilting and a few tips and tricks and I'm going to show you some of the tools that I use and some of the attachments that come with my sewing machine in case that you have them and you are wondering what they were for. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay guys, so uh, today uh, we are going to be creating our quilt sandwich and um, basically what that is is your topper. So I'm going to show you this quilt. Um, I, I already have it all put together, but I'll explain the layers to you. So you have your topper, which is your background fabric with all of your hexes attached to it. And that is going to be 20 by 20. Remember, we cut that out to be 20 by 20 inches. And then to that, you're going to attach your uh, batting. So for this one, uh, this is Hobbs 80-20. So it's 80% cotton and 20% polyester. Um, there's a few different ways to attach your sandwich all together. And I'm gonna go through those with you. So your quilt sandwich, I should say, consists of your topper, your batting, and your backing fabric. The batting and your backing fabric need to be a little bit larger than your quilt topper. Uh, so I like to have, when I'm doing it by machine or by hand, I like to have a good two inch um, border all the way around. So I cut the back, my back fabric, right? And my batting at 24 inches square and my topper is 20 inches square. And that will give me two inches all the way around. And that allows for some shrinkage because when as you quilt, you're going to, it's gonna shrink just a little bit. Right, and it also gives you something else to hold on to when you're feeding it all throughout the machine. So yeah, that's why you do that. If you eventually get to the point where you're gonna be making quilts and you're gonna send them out to a long armor, a long arm actually requires an eight inch um, border all the way around. So there's a little tidbit of information for you. Now, there's a few ways to attach your quilt sandwich all together. This is kind of weird. All I can see are my hands and it's a little bit weird. I hope it's not weird for you guys. My favorite way is to use glue uh, to baste it. When I'm using a smaller quilt like this one, a wall quilt, I'll actually just bust out my good old glue stick. I swear. When, you know, when I started sewing, I never thought I would use glue as much as I do. I always use it, always. So, because this is small, um, what I do is I just get my topper and I run my glue stick all the way around it. And then I put it on top of my batting and I'll use my iron on a low heat to set it. And then I will flip it over and I'll do the same thing for my background fabric. So I'll run glue all around it, flip it onto the batting, use an iron to, um, to set it. And we can call that one a day. When I'm working with larger quilts, so basically anything that is this bigger than this so a crib quilt all the way up to full size doesn't matter this is my best friend so this is just uh it's quilt basting spray so it's glue but you spray it on um yeah i do like it it's it, so there's like 505 which is available at michael's and stuff like that uh and if you can use a coupon to get it that's that's awesome this is from my local quilt shop um stitch by stitch it's 15 dollars for a can and i can baste uh depending on the size of the quilt uh at least two sometimes even three so a little goes um a long way with it i do find that when i do this method one i need to enlist help um, from a buddy so usually I rope Mike into doing it just to spread things out into because I have to lay it out onto the floor Two, make sure you open up your windows because this stuff is stinky uh, what else oh and they also say I really like this extremely flammable so don't have scented candles <laughs> while you're doing this or you're gonna like light the whole place up so yeah glue uh, quilt basting spray worth every dollar in my book so once you have your, oh, sorry, there is one more way to do it. I just never do it, so I never think about talking about it. The other way to do it is to lay down your background fabric, so this one, put your batting on top, 
So there's my batting. Put your quilt top on top of that. And then use safety pins to pin it all together. So like maybe every four inches or so you would put down a safety pin. You don't want to use straight like glass topper pins because those are going to come out and they're going to stab you while you're sewing it. But safety pins then you can remove them um, as they come up to the machine. Honestly, I have never done it that way, um, but I do know a few people who do, and some people prefer it because it can hold things a little bit tighter, like it's not going to shift on you. And for a large quilt, like a king size quilt, I have heard of people using the basting and the pins at the same time. So that's an option too. I just, I've never used it, so I can't really speak to um, if it's better or not, but it is, it is another way of doing it. So, yeah, put this away. I would like to talk to you about some of the things that I use when I'm quilting. So let's start with machine quilting and then I just started dabbling in with hand quilting and there's a few things that I like to use for that too but we'll do that afterwards. Okay so machine quilting. You if you uh, have a standard sewing machine that doesn't come with any quilting attachments you definitely can use your regular presser foot um, Sorry, I'm trying to get mine off of my machine. Your regular pressing foot. You just have to be cautious that this is not going to feed the whole sandwich, like all those layers through your machine evenly. So if this is all that you have, that's cool. Just maybe make sure that you cut your batting and your background uh, your backing fabric a little bit larger because there is more like shifting could happen maybe not so much with a quilt this size or anything smaller but if you get into like doing a crib quilt you're definitely gonna have to really think about uh, it shifting and maybe cutting things a little bit larger uh, like at least the background and the and the batting now this is the walking foot that came with my machine and I think most walking feet really do look the same if you sew knits on a regular machine then you would know about this too so this walking foot this part here see this little like crab foot that actually rests on the um your needle bar like you know how you have that little screw that holds in your needle into your machine it rests on that and that helps these feet, I don't know if you can see, I'm gonna try to show you. Can you see how they're moving? I don't think I can capture it on camera very well, but I'll give you every angle. Any oh, there you go, see? So this acts like a second set of feed dogs, and what this does is it grabs the top of your fabric while your feed dogs are grabbing your bottom fabric, and it makes sure that everything goes in nice and smoothly. And it just, yeah, it feeds in all of your fabric nice and evenly. So the whole sandwich is going to go in evenly. This is going to cut down on puckering, shifting, you know, all that good stuff. There's also a little bar. See, there's this little hole here and a little screw. So there's an extra bar that comes out and it would like go in here and stick out. And you can use that to measure equal distances between each row of quilting. So when I'm doing straight line quilting, this is on my machine. I, I love it. And like the first time that I put it on, it was really awkward and clunky. I'm like, what is going on? And then after that, it's easy as pie. Now I can like do it in no time at all. Okay, next thing. So this is called, uh, well, the real name for it is a darning foot. Think about like if you were gonna fix a hole in a pair of pants or like a small pin hole, um, you wouldn't want to go zigzag back and forth and then back and forth. This opens it up and it allows you to move the fabric underneath the needle rather um, rather than the other way around. Uh, so you could go over the same spot over and over again, but this is also awesome for free motion quilting. So in order to use this, you put it on um, the same way as you would out any other foot. So like this goes into the screw that holds on. Um, I know the technical name and now it's, for some other reason, I can't think of it right now. But you know the part of the foot, the part of your machine that you snap your presser foot into? Yeah, 
that's where it goes into. That's where it um, screws into. Now, to use this, you have to drop your feed dogs. So your machine should have a little button that you can slide across and that's gonna drop your feed dogs, which means that your machine is not automatically gonna um, pull your fabric through. So you can move your fabric whichever way that you want. And that's where this foot comes in. See, it's kind of like this little hole. Whoop, there it is. So your needle goes through there and that's where your that's where your stitch is gonna be. So you can do uh, free motion designs. You can do thread painting with this. It's pretty cool. Uh, some of them will hop, so it'll like move while you're sewing. I don't like that, it's distracting to me. So this one actually just stays where, stays where it is. So there's that. Uh, the next foot that I want to show you is a ruler foot. Kind of looks like that free motion foot, huh? That darning foot. The difference is, is this right here. See, maybe that shows it better. See how thick that is compared to an actual darning foot. And the reason that it's thicker is because then you get to use a ruler to do ruler work. So to do this, this would be on your machine. You would drop your feed dog. So it's the same as free motion quilting, right? but you slide your ruler along with the quilt. There's little grippies on this along the foot and you can get perfectly straight lines or you could get um, like stencils so that way you can make clamshells or wavy lines. Like if you see on my Facebook all the time, there's these ads that pop up for those cool quilting templates, those big thick acrylic templates. This is the type of foot that you would want on it. So it's called a ruler foot. This is thick enough. Some of them are metal. I just got a plastic one. It's thick enough so that way the ruler doesn't get underneath it and then you break your needle, you go through this and it's crazy. It's loud, it's scary. So that's what that's for. The last foot that I'm gonna show you is this one. Yeah, look at that, it's got a little ruler guidey thing in the middle. So this is called a uh, stitch in the ditch foot. Guess what it's for? Stitching in the ditch. What is that you ask? Oh, well, I will show you. So when you're doing patchwork quilts and you're um, putting a whole bunch of pieces together, right? So let's say that we're doing a quilt star and we're sewing a whole bunch of pieces together. If you wanted to quilt this as in stitch in the ditch, that means that you're sewing right in between the joined pieces, right in between the seams. So this little foot, has a guide right here. And all you would do is line that up with the seam in your patchwork and then you would sew along and it goes right in, um, in your seams. So it creates like a, you, you won't be able to see your stitches. So it creates like a poofy effect, at least I think so. It's really like a traditional way of quilting. So yeah, that's my stitch in the ditch foot. Okay. So with this, with my quilt, let me see if I can show it to you. See all those straight lines? What I did with this is I did some straight line quilting over my hexes. This is called matchstick quilting because the lines are so nice and close together. Some people really like to make sure that all their lines are straight and equally apart. I just kind of went for it. I'm calling these organic lines because they're so organic in the way that they flow across the hexes. <laughs> That's my way of saying I don't care if they're straight. <laughs> and I actually used um, variegated thread on this one. So I don't know if you can see it. There we go. Uh, so with that one, I used my walking foot and I just went back and forth over top of the hexes over and over again. Um, one thing I will point out is I wanted to make sure that I got as close to all of these corners as possible so that way they, the hexes weren't lifting up. So that's what I did for this. Matchstick quilting, straight lines. It's really modern and really in right now and it's super easy to do. The closer that you stitch together, so the more lines that you put, the denser that this part of the quilt will be. So let's see how it's not as like bendy. 
It's got a lot more body to it. That's because all these stitches, it looks really good on the back side too. So all of these stitches here, it's just, it's the closer they are, the more dense it's going to be. That's the best way I can put it. Then what I did, sorry, I'll show this side of it, is I did some hand quilting on the negative space. I love negative space quilts because it just, it's a blank canvas. You really can do whatever you want on it. And I thought, you know, I'm gonna try hand stitching. As you can see, I didn't aim for perfection. They're not straight. I'm more of like a free flowing, organic quilting kind of person. So this is my first time hand stitching. I didn't think I was gonna like it. I actually like it. It's soothing. I, uh, it's just, it's kind of meditative. You're just sitting there and sewing along and it's and it's nice and it does give a really nice texture to it. I haven't washed this quilt. So that like crinkly texture, that's all just from hand sewing it. And I did that on this side too. See if I can show it a little better, but I did a little I did some X's. So I'm really pleased with how that turned out. And I will uh, talk about my limited knowledge on hand quilting because like I said, this is the first time that I did it. Um, I love trying new things on smaller quilts. They seem to be like the perfect uh, size project to to try something else out on. So for this one, now this is probably the thickest thread that I would use ever. Uh, this is called big stitching. Um, so it's not like traditional hand stitching where you're using a really fine thread and you're trying to get really small stitches on a needle. This is just like, go for it. Just do it. <laughs> The bigger the stitch, the better. So for this, I'm actually use I used um, crochet thread, which I think is a size 12, if I'm not mistaken. That would be the largest um, that I would use. Sorry for the awkward pause there. Yeah. I went to go grab something. So this is variegated, and it's in all these pastel-y colors, which uh, I thought was a really nice compliment for it. What I'm using on this uh, other quilt that I'm hand quilting right now, because I am officially addicted, see this is um, DMC Pearl Cotton, and it's a size 8. And you can see the size difference. Uh, maybe not with that, because that pink is really close to my skin tone, isn't it? There we go. So, crochet thread, and then this is size 8 uh, embroidery thread. This glides through fabric really, really well. I like it. Um, I haven't had any problems with it. And it's really easy to pop a knot with this one, like get it in, uh, into your quilt sandwich. Uh, this one was hard. <laughs> Took some really good tugging. This would probably be good if you were like uh, making a quilt with linen because it's got a looser weave. So it would probably go through a little bit nicer. But so far this one is winning with me. I really do like it. And I got this thread um, actually from Mad About Patchwork too. They have a good selection online for this. So if you want to try it, um, thimble, yes, you need it. I like it on my middle finger because I use that to do the rocking motion and push it through all the layers. If you don't, you will poke a, a hole through your finger. Ask me how I know. <laughs> So when I am doing my hand quilting with this thicker uh, thread, I can't use a regular needle. You need something with a little bit more, it's a little beefy. So see if you can see these. I don't know if my autofocus is gonna work. See, Ooh, nope, it's not. Either way, these are uh, tulip chenille needles. So they're a little thicker. They're gold eyed. Um, so the eye is nice and big easy to thread. I haven't found that I needed to use a needle threader. I can just do it by myself. So you can see all of them here. They do have a longer shaft. So I still find that I can get like four, maybe five stitches on a needle before I pull it through. Let's see if they show. Yeah, so these are chenille needles and I have them. Uh, it comes in size 18, 20, 22, and 24. So for um, big stitch stitching, these are awesome. The other thing that I like to use is a chalk. No, it's a white crayon. 
Yeah. So every time we get a new box of washable crayons for the kids, I always steal the white one because it's perfect for marking out uh, quilting designs and it washes right off. And I don't even have to put the quilt through the washing machine per se. I could um, either spot clean it or wash it by hand uh, and it comes right off. I think it's, it's, it's awesome. So I always steal the white one. They never use it anyways. So now it's mommy's. Ha -ha. Yes. Yeah, so that's what I like to do uh, for hand quilting. And doo -doo -doo. also going back to machine quilting, I'm kind of zigzagging all over the place, aren't I? But I think of things as I talk. I'm a little bit of a, I do that. <laughs> so when you're machine quilting, this is the perfect time to start using all those fancy stitches that you never thought they would use if you do use them. On this one, I don't know if you can see. Oh, you can't see it. So I have like a nice wavy stitch. I did this entire quilt in the wavy stitch. And it looks so awesome. Like it's just another layer. See that? It's another layer of texture. It's really cool. Uh, other ones, um, some machines come up with like these scatterbrained free motion. Uh, it's called stippling. Your, your machine might have that. And then at that point, all you're doing is feeding it through. So it gives you the look of free motion quilting without free motion quilting. So I think I've covered most, if not all, that I was thinking about uh, getting your quilt quilted. So if you have any questions, please let me know, or if something wasn't explained uh, thoroughly, let me know. Uh, also, what would be great is if you are thinking about this, you know, decorative stitches on your machine and you don't know if they're gonna work or not, why don't you take a picture of the stitches that your machine comes with and post them up after this video and we can go through and we can see which stitches would work for you and not. Because I bet you that you at least have one or two decorative stitches that could be used for an all over uh, quilting pattern or even if it was just on the borders. So again, if you have any questions or if you get stuck on a step, let me know. Uh, if not, we will be back tomorrow and tomorrow we are gonna start um, squaring this off and getting the binding ready. All right, thank you very much for joining me.